Amen by Christina Rossetti. It is over, what is over? Nay, now much is over truly. Harvest days we toiled to sow for, now the sheaves are gathered newly. Now the wheat is garnered duly. It is finished, what is finished? Much is finished, known or unknown, lives are finished, time diminished. Was the fallow field left unsown? Will these buds be always unblown? It suffices, what suffices? All suffices record rightly. Spring shall bloom when now the ice is, roses make the bramble sightly, and the quickening sun shine brightly, and the latter wind blow lightly, and my garden teem with spices. First I'll give you some information about Christina Rossetti. There's a bit of information here, but not that much. I'd recommend adding some of this if you like it. Basically, um, she had a very fragile... She was in a very fragile state. She had numerous breakdowns during her life. She had two failed engagements. She was very religious and had chronic illness later in life. The rhythm is a trochaic tetrameter, which is urgent and pounding. And um, she begins each stanza, there are three stanzas, um, with a declarative and then a question. An interesting question thing to mention is that the poem is called Amen. And you would think that Amen would go at the end, so this is sort of, it's sort of like a prayer. Now at the end of a prayer you would say Amen, but instead she's saying Amen at the beginning. This could indicate a sort of an acceptance and a so, so be it attitude. So the first stanza has, um, the it is over, what is over, nay, now much is over truly. There's an, that over truly is sort of an emotional exclamatory. And the caesura after that adds an emphatic feeling of finality. The, the idea that she's saying, harvest days we toil to sow for, now the sheaves are gathered newly, now the wheat is garnered duly. So life has been hard. The harvest has been hard, the work has been hard, but it's over now. And the anaphora of now, now, um, indicates finality. So she's saying that she's, she's reinforcing the fact that this hard, part is over. Although, although this poem is going to be sort of very emotional, this is a negative part of it, the rhyming adds a little more fluidity and maybe a little more conversational, uh, a more conversational tone to it. Tone to it. The second stanza begins with it is finished, what is finished, and throughout she uses finished again and again and again. This idea of the negative side this these adjectives saying failure and ending it's just all oh, so depressing um she repeats the fricatives and plosives uh the fallow field and finished and, and sown and unblown and oh my god it indicates frustration as i am frustrated reading this i am frustrated now she is frustrated writing it beat with life with, she's frustrated with life. Um, the third stanza is, is a change in her idea. The second stanza was a sort of missed um, opportunity. She's saying, was well, the fallow field left unsown? Oh God. So the second, so the third stanza, I mean the last stanza. She's saying, uh, let's look at the bright side. Spring has come again and so will your joy. That's basically her idea. Or on the other hand, you can say that maybe she's, she's Referencing the fact that now you can die and the joy will go on in heaven. So despite the fact of having a hard life, heaven will be sort of silver lining. The ending and my garden team with spices, I guess it's slightly, it's got slight bathos, which means sort of it ends on sort of a shockingly unexciting note. But again, the, the you could argue that spices is a sensory, exciting sort of word, but I, I don't think so, but in an exam just go for whatever you can, whatever you think is appropriate. That's pretty much it. She uses Lexus and imagery of nature and the chronology of the seasons to indicate time passing, but this is a pretty straightforward poem, so it's just, it's just what it is. So please comment because I I would love to have something to make this poem sincerely interesting. If you have that something, please write it down. 
and um, that was that.